Welcome back to some Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling. Shall we see what's going on on our lovely island of Fawn Holly today? Apparently there was a bug off today. I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> That's a bit annoying. It's probably over by now. Ah, no, we're going to miss out on a stamp. <sighs> I forgot it was today. I thought they were on Sunday. But not, they're on Saturday, aren't they? <laughs> Whoops. If you don't know, there's, um, you get a participate, um, a Nook Mile stamp for every single time. You join a bug off during the summer season, but good evening, everyone. Right now in Fawn Hollow at 7.07 p.m. on Saturday, August 22nd, 2020. No big announcements today. So, um, you might be asking, dear darling, why are you recording so late today? Well, uh, I was recording some Hollow Night earlier, and I was like, okay, this will be done, and then I'll probably have enough time around, um, to record some Animal Crossing afterwards. Um, the Hollow Night episode took way longer than I thought. Check this out, dear. I was at a home a while back and got to watch my cousin's kid. That little rugrat is so stinking cute. I know I got a tough reputation, which is fair because I'm tough. But little kids, just get me right there. Don't tell anybody. Future. Aww. Um, so what are we going to do? You know, why don't we do some... No, because I need to wait for 11pm for that. Um, I was going to say, let's. why don't we do some golden stag hunting? Uh, we can't do that because... Um, we need that it to be 11 p.m. and then I'll go to Nukmal Island to do that. We don't have it. It doesn't have to be 11 p.m. It's just easier if it's 11 p.m. because they have they spawn more frequently with golden stags, I believe. It's also boiling hot right now, so I've opened my window despite turning on my light. So yeah, you might be like, dear darling, why are you replying? Not replying. <laughs> um, why are you recording so late today? Well, dear viewer, I was recording some Hollow Knight just beforehand, and. I don't know if you're also watching Hollow Knight series, but the, um, the, ser the episode it's going to be, which takes forever, is going to be, I don't know, what, number 24? No, no, sorry, not 24, 54 or something like that. It's going to be the one where I'm trying to fill in um, my Hunter Journal, basically, and it just took freaking forever, basically, because I had to go backtrack through a lot of places, and then um, there's basically one... One enemy which doesn't spawn, which has a 2% chance of spawning, mind you, an optional an optional enemy to get for the Hunter's Journal, but I decided to do it anyway because I was like, it won't take that long, and it took a real long time. And then, <laughs> so the episode ran over about half an hour, and I was like, oh, I don't have enough time to record this Animal Crossing episode. I, it turns out I do. I, I was debating, like, recording at, like, 11pm and being like, oh, I'll just have a super late recording and I'll do a Golden Stag thing. And then, some time passed, and I was like, that's stupid. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, obviously. <laughs> So I'm not. So here I am, recording decidedly late compared to usual. Which is, um, I don't know, just how it's going to go. Hopefully, it'll be fine. And I'll get enough time to finish this episode before I need to upload it, or before something happens and then I need to upload it. I don't need to cut or whatever, but I don't know. We'll, we'll just see what happens as we come to it. Right now, let's just focus on what's in front of us, which is some Animal Crossing New Horizons business. Which I guess we're not going to do anything particularly fancy rather than our usual bag of getting gifts for people and then, um, what's the word? Watering our flowers. Did we water our flowers yesterday? I just don't remember. I don't think we did. No, we must have. Because what else would I have done yesterday? <laughs> anyway. I was actually thinking about what I was going to talk about in this episode, like, w w way, way earlier in the day. And, um, you know what I was going to talk about? Speed running. I, I even checked to make sure I didn't already have an episode talking about this already. <laughs> because, um, earlier in this today, earlier in this today, earlier today I watched, um, a Hollow Knight speed run because, uh, I'm basically, uh, I've, I've done the, the, main, the base game of Hollow Knight now, officially, I suppose. <laughs> I've, I've basically seen basically everything there is to see in the base game. That's not true. I haven't collected all every single collectible, but that's kind of hard to track anyway, and I can't be able to do that. But I've, ba I've got like all the charms that I can get so far, and I've um, I defeated the final boss and the secret final boss and that sort of thing. So I was like, oh, okay, well, that's good stuff. Uh, and then I can't remember. I think because summer summer games done quick is on around now. So I was thinking about speedrunning. I was like, you know what? Now's probably a good time to actually watch a Hollow Knight speedrun because now I'm actually going to understand what's going on, sort of. 
when I look through, and it's pretty wild <laughs> what they do. Uh, and just in general, speedrunning is pretty wild. I think Hollow Knight, perhaps less so, it's much more on the mechanical execution of it. There doesn't seem to be as many glitches or exploits to use to dramatically shave off your time. It's sort of like, just do it really fast and efficiently. Now, I might be wrong because I'm not an expert in speedrunning, so I might have judged that severely wrong. But like compared to like Super Mario 64, like, well, I suppose Nintendo 64 era games, like Majora's Mask, is that, that that's one that people have done speed run, right? Or was it Ocarina of Time? I don't, I don't remember. Um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, those ones seem to use a lot of bugs and exploits to like skip through large swaths of a game. Which Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight is not really like breaking the game as such because it's designed in such a way that you can skip lots lots of it anyway, and just fight the the final boss. Not. Like right at the beginning, it's not as crazy as some games are where it puts a final boss right in front of you. <laughs> like I think Breath of the Wild might do that. I'm not sure. I've got Breath of the Wild. I've never played it. <laughs> I know cardinal sin, but sorry, uh, I'm distracted from point. Um, it's just sort of just doing things really efficiently and effectively, and but uh, there are some tricks here and there, obviously to shortcut your way. Like another one, like a thing I saw is like you can um, forego getting the dash. At some point, if you um, use the, the Vengeful Spirit, which is like an ability, which pushes you backwards slightly as you do it. And I was like, that's pretty cool. And it just got me thinking. I was like, man, it must take forever to find these like little ex exploits and stuff in the speedrunning community. I mean, you've seen like the Mario 64 stuff, uh, the community of speedrunning that spawned from that, which is absolutely absurd because there's so many different categories, as I understand it. you got like 20 stars, 120 stars. you got... <laughs> Fewest button presses, presses, you've got other things like that. I mean, everyone knows about the fewest button press things. How to, was, what's the video? How to beat roll, rolling rocks in one and a half A presses or something? Well, TJ Henry Yoshi. <laughs> you can have half A press. If you don't know what video I'm talking about, just, just search like one and a half, or like half, half A press or something. Mario 64, I've, I can't remember who it's by. I really can't remember off the top of my head that YouTuber's name, but it's really good. <laughs> it's a really intriguing watch, I think, in my opinion. It's starting to look like I didn't water my flowers yesterday, which makes me really wonder, what did I do yesterday? Maybe I just sorted out my flowers and didn't water them. That sounds like something I'd probably do. <laughs> Anywho. What was I saying? I don't remember. Oh yeah, the speedrunning community is crazy. Like, how do they find these exploits? Are most of them just found by accident? Like, probably people who don't even speedrun the game just do it and be like, oh, that's kind of weird. Maybe the speedrunning community will want to know about it. Although, to be fair, I think the speedrunning community is probably very experienced with trying to find, like, exploits or shortcuts or... use the mechanics to their advantage to break the game, but not break, break the game. Like, break the game in quotes. More like... You know, um, get it done quick, well, I suppose, <laughs> in the most reductive way I can put it. <laughs> I suppose that's what speedrunning is. Game's done quick. Hence the, hence the gaming conference's name, or gaming show, I don't know. Charity event, I suppose. I haven't actually watched any of it this year. I watched some of it, I don't normally watch it live. Because, I, <laughs> normally what I do, I'll be honest, I wait for the, the Reddit thread um, after it's all done and they're just like oh these are these are the runs to check out if you're interested and i'll be like oh i'll check them out so some of my, some of my favorite ones i checked out i checked out the cuphead one from i think it was 2017 or 18. was cuphead even released then i don't remember <laughs> to be honest i get i super get years mixed up all the time in my head and it was in the past <laughs> go watch it um because i had recently finished playing Cuphead at that time and I was like, I want to see what happens when, you know, someone just utterly demolishes it. And it's incredibly interesting. And the one standout bit that I really remember very well is, uh, there's, um, spoilers for Cuphead. M minor spoilers. No, <laughs> My path. Oh well, um, uh, 
the final one of the final bosses is um King Dai. And it takes place in a casino and he's got like nine mini bosses. And one of the mini bosses is like um a snap game. It's like um sixteen odd cards or something in the background. And you had to flip them over and match your pairs and then only then can you damage a boss. You'll probably know what I'm talking about if you play the game. That far at least. Um and there's actually a way just to completely bypass bypass that boss entirely, which just involves like you waiting until the boss, sorry, until the boss is on the very left side of the screen, and then you fail a match or something, like you get a wrong pairing, and then the boss just flies off the screen and dies, <laughs> just randomly. Obviously not intended by the developers, I imagine. It'd be a weird thing to program in. I was just seeing how many presents we got at the ready. That's five. We need nine. It's going to give us one and we'll grab one from this mini orchard down here. So yeah, um, I just thought that was really cool. I was like, how do you even discover that? Surely not intentionally. Surely that was by accident. Someone was just trying to do the boss and, you know, remembered the card wrong and then accidentally sent it off screen and we're like, huh. I know what they can do in Mario 64 is they can, like, crawl through the, the actual code of a game or something. And try and pinpoint exactly how things are understood by the game engine. And thus, exploit it to its maximum. Because that's something like how they did hit detection, which is how the whole parallel universe thing <laughs> comes up in um, Super Mario 64. That's another reference to the Rolling Rocks. One and a half A presses video. It's such a good video. It's such a good insight into the like speed running, I think. And the lengths people go. Even though that one's not actually a speed run, it's more like um a restricted restricted tool set run, I guess. I don't I don't really know how you say. You know, but there's another YouTuber who does a really another interesting video series about the, the history of um speed running world records or something, right? I remember watching one about he did a Mario Kart 64 about um I can't remember which um of course it was I didn't play a lot of Mario 64 I played a lot of Mario Kart Wii I'm sorry to say it's uh like the mountain one is it a chocolate mountain I don't know if I made it up and it's not actually Cocoa Mountain or whatever but it's that one and it's really interesting this is whenever you get like these small sort of glimpses into um different communities you're not part of and someone comes along with a very articulate and thorough with a way to explain it and the context behind things. It just makes it such an enjoyable watch. That's basically all I'd say about that. <laughs> That's just a mad respect for the speedrunning community. I don't think I could be a speedrunner. Not because I don't have the patience to do something over and over again. I, I, I have, I like to think, quite a lot of patience. I'm a rather patient person. Um, I will be honest, I'll probably get incredibly bored. I don't think I love a game even my favourite games, I don't love enough to play that many times in a row. Like, I'm trying to think what game I've played through the most. And I think it's actually like the Portal 2 co-op, because I played it through with like five different friends or something. What, what single player game have I played the most? Played through the most. I don't think that there are many games, my, my favourite games of all time, I don't think I've even played them. Like more than twice or so. Like, Undertale is my favourite game of all time. Hmm? Oh, you're talking about a bug off. <laughs> um, yeah, Undertale is my favourite game of all time. I've only played that through once. No, that's not true. I played it through once on the neutral and then like half a time for the pacifist because I've already done most of the things set up for pacifist and I played it on a friend's account <laughs> for genocide. Not because I didn't want to do it on my account, I also started doing it on my account, but then it was just like, I like visited him, he was like, oh, what do you want to do? And he's like, do you want to check out Genocide and Undertale? And we're like, sure. That sounds right, really hard, but we did eventually beat it. <laughs> or I eventually beat it, I should say. My friend, not very good. <laughs> he was no good at that. So anyway, um, I guess we'll run around giving gifts. For now. For now. I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, I've only played that through, so max two and a half times, right? It's like nothing compared to 
the amount of times you need to play through for speedrunning, they, they must be like on thousands of playthroughs or something. Not complete playthroughs, mind you, because, you know, if they, they get to a certain point and they mess it up, they're just going to reset if they can't, if it's like not worth it to continue that because they won't be able to beat their personal best or get a good time in or whatever. Just the dedication you must have to a game. Or I suppose you have to be a certain kind of person to be able to do it right. Or a certain kind of person, I don't mean right in a demeaning way, but like um, on the way you, that you get your enjoyment out of games. You enjoy pushing things to their limits, seeing like where it breaks. Getting things down pixel perfect, like efficiency, that sort of thing. Which isn't really how I like to play games. I don't like to push things like that to the limit. I kind of like have a, a breadth. No, that's not true. I like to have a, a narrow breadth, which honestly makes no sense. So what I may, mean to say is like, I'll play through lots of games once necessarily, but I, I know I know where my preferences lie, you know, puzzle games, story games. So that's the sort of thing um, I'll stick with. I actually feel like I did talk about this before in an Animal Crossing video. It's really hard to remember. Once, <laughs> I'm like in my 160s now, so <laughs> a lot of my conversations probably overlap at this point. Um, it's just like. Another point I had to say though, it must be really boring speedrunning puzzle games. Like there's probably certain games which lend itself well to speedrunning, like mechanical based. We don't know a shell fountain, I could have sworn we got a recipe for it before. Games heavily re relying on mechanics and very smooth, crisp, like responsiveness are probably games which like Hollow Knight, Cuphead, Dark Souls, well actually I'm not sure of Dark Souls. I mean, Dark Souls does lend itself, itself well to speedrunning, but it's not what doesn't quite fit the descriptors, I think. I don't know, I haven't actually played Dark Souls, so maybe I shouldn't comment on things I don't know. Games like that really lend themselves well to speedrunning because you can break the system, you can push it to the limit, you, you have mechanics and things available to you, you have lots of opportunities to really see how far you can go with it. But then games like, like puzzle games, I suppose, I'd imagine the speedrunning aspect of it isn't as nearly as fun because not many puzzle games have randomised puzzles because that's one, a nightmare to test, and two, a nightmare to program, I'd imagine. So things like Snakebird, Babbo's You, Parts of a Witness, I suppose, they must not be, well, okay, I shouldn't say they must not be, but in my mind, I'm not sure I can see as much of appeal as spe to speedrun those games. Because it sort of feels like, how quickly can you execute this predetermined set of moves, I suppose. Which now I think about it, it's kind of how it goes for other games. So maybe I'm just talking to myself in a circle. Maybe maybe I'm talking myself around on it. Maybe I can kind of see the appeal. I can kind of see the appeal of Baba's you. Not necessarily so much of the execution, but the, the planning, you know? You know? I'm convincing myself. The planning of a route must be really interesting. Being like, which which levels can I get away with? Which levels is it faster? Like this level is actually a really simple solution, but it's quite it takes some time to set up that solution. While this one actually has a very interesting exploitative solution we can use that you discovered. Or maybe if you're the one one of the pioneers of um, the speedrunning community for Babazu, you, you can sit there being like, okay, if I can figure out a different solution to this level or a slightly more efficient like way of moving the tiles, sort of the blocks even, um, but I can shave off like a few seconds for everyone in the speed community, speedrunning community, that's pretty cool, you know? I can, I can get down with that, I can get down with that. Where's Radio? We're going to have to talk to him because we haven't made friends with him before. Well, I don't know where he is, um, I guess we should probably stop the island designer. Oh, I'm so thirsty, hold on. Ah. And in these last ten minutes, I suppose the only thing we can do is try and find a golden stag, because, um... Uh, the other thing we need to catch is... only spawns at 9pm, so... <laughs> and it's a deep sea creature. Um, it's gonna be super bad, because if I'm talking, I'm gonna be so distracted, I'm totally gonna scare away the golden stag. <laughs> Horn Dynasty, get out of here. Uh, what was I saying? <laughs> Honestly, can't remember. Also, where am I going? 
Oh yeah, Baba, Baba Zoo speedrunning. I think I have watched a Baba Zoo speedrun before. I don't remember it very well though. It's just interesting. I think it's just cool how how many different ways people can play a game and get their same and, and get their own enjoyment out of it. Because you know, there's loads of different ways to play a game. Not everyone has to play in the same way or enjoy a game the same way. Like, just which which part bits of a game do you like most? Those are the things you should focus on, right? You shouldn't try and play a game a certain way just because that's how the general population plays it, or how fans of a series are like, this is how you should play it, or how the developers expected you to play it. Play it how you want to play it. Play it so you have fun. That's the whole point of a game in the end, right? To have fun. And I feel that myself, I suppose. Like, just like how speedrunners might play the game in a very push it to the limit sort of way, uh, I like to basically just solve puzzles. And read about lore, I suppose. Learn about characters. See development. But I don't like to explore that much. As I'm finding it very apparent from when I played The Witness in Hollow Knight. I'm basically like, give me a destination to go to and I'll make my way there. And I'll do the task needed there. I sort of just follow this one path rather than really deviating from it, which in those games it's much more expected of you because they are much more exploration I'm not focused per se, but like they they grant you the means to explore should you want to. But you see you don't have to if you don't want to. Thank goodness for game wikis. So I can just sort of look up a solution. Not look up a solution, look up where I need to go. I don't look up solutions. Puzzles are my jam. That, that's what I'm there for. If I look up a solution, that's what defeats the point of it, doesn't it? Same thing for speedrunners, you know? Of course they're ready to have a game the game goes, they played it through multiple, multiple times. But they just love it so much that they're willing to push it to its limit. And push themselves to the limit at the same time, I suppose. See how see what they can make of it. See what holes that they can find and thread that they, they can unravel. Sorry, it's kind of thirsty. Look how stormy it is in the background there. Or how cloudy, sorry, not stormy. Um, You might ask why I'm not running. I feel like it's better not to run because golden staggers are super, super skittish. As soon as you walk slightly close to them, they just fly off. As I've learned a couple of times before. So I'm going to be a bit more cautious about it if I can. I'm trying to think what other speedruns I've watched. I've watched highlights of some speedruns. I'll be honest, some speedruns are really long, depending on the game, like over an hour or two. I'm like, if I see a game I like, which is a speedrun is like two hours or something, I'm sorry, that's too long for me. <laughs> I think half an hour is that sweet spot for me. Of video game speedrun length that I like to watch. And also what matters a lot with, um, so I'm, I'm talking about summer games done quick, or any other games done quick, um, conferences? I don't, I don't know what they're called. Events. Gaming events. That's probably a better term for it. Um, I think the commentary really matters a lot. The person doing the speedrunning slash the bench, so, sorry, the couch, who are backing them up. Like, if they can explain it well, that matters a lot. In my opinion, to the adjoinment of it for your old normal gamer like me. Like, uh, I didn't actually watch this speedrun, but there was a clip of this guy, I, I don't even know what game he was playing, but he he actually bought like a free, not a 3D model, he bought like, he made a mini model. Uh, that's a giraffe stag, isn't it? Might as well catch it. He made like a mini model of, um, that's how skittish they are. The golden stags are even more skittish than that. You have to actually stop walking, if you're slow walking, at some points to make sure you don't scare it away. Um, I forgot what I was saying. He made, he made like, out of solo cups and some cardboard or whatever, a little model to explain what glitch he was going to do. About, like, teleporting out of bounds or something? <laughs> I don't know, there's a good Twitch clip of it. And he does it and he's explaining it and it's like a minute long explanation. And then at the end he goes like, now, that's going to save us 40 seconds. 
some really complicated explanation. And the crowd just goes, ha, 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 ha. And I went, ha, 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 ha. That's funny. Yeah, speed riding. A wild thing, isn't it? I am so hot right now. I'll be honest. <laughs> it's getting to my brain. I don't, I've done so much speaking today. <laughs> because on Hollow Knight as well. Um, sorry, so much like improvisational conversation. Because like in Hollow Knight as well, uh, the current part I'm at is not one which I really comment on what I'm doing as much. I'm sort of just backtracking through areas trying to find trying to kill enemies I haven't killed yet enough of yet to get the, the Hunter's Journal. So I was just I, I think I even mentioned in my episodes like this is basically just an Animal Crossing episode now. I'm just I'm just randomly talking for half an hour or <laughs> doing something. Podcast sort of style, I suppose. It'd be really cool to have this as a proper podcast, you know. Play some Animal Crossing and then be like, oh Today we got a famous speedrunner, blah blah blah. Let's talk to him about speedrunning for half an hour. <laughs> half an hour is a bit short for a podcast, isn't it, babe? Aren't podcasts like hours long? I don't know if I could do that. I already struggled to speak for like a few hours each day. It just drains me, you know? Now I think about it. <laughs> the speedrunning that, um, it is kind of like what I'm doing, you know? I, I, sorry, I'm, I'm skipping ahead in my thought process there. I was like, how do they actually commentate while speedrunning at the same time? It must be very difficult. But one, is a relaxed environment because it's a gaming conference. They're not trying to break world records or anything. They're just sort of trying to do things for charity, show off a game that they love. And um, two, um, when you speedrun over and over and over again, you sort of get used to it. Things get allocated to muscle memory or your unconscious, subconscious mind. Sorry, subconscious mind, not unconscious mind. That's a bit, it's a bit different, isn't it? Where you can just zone out and be like, "Ooh, I know exactly what I'm doing at this point." I can just mindlessly chatter over the top of it. Plus, I also got the couch there to support them. Or some some people do, some people don't. Some people go couchless, and it's just them speed running and having a conversation. Mad respect to that. I don't know if I could do something like that, but I'm not a speedrunner, I suppose, so I don't have to do that. <laughs> Instead, I had to just do it every single day for half an hour in Animal Crossing. Oh yeah, reminder that uh, this is going to be... I'm not going to be uploading videos on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday next week, because I will be too busy and not here. <laughs> I will not be at my computers to be able to record, or not be able to at least. So I'm sorry, it's going to be the first break in New Horizons I've had since its release. I'll still play it each day, mind you, probably, on those days. I just won't be able to record. And uh, I'm not going to do anything particularly fancy. Um, you know, I didn't think about it until just now. I won't water the flowers if I do play on those days, because um, if I get a blue rose that's, and I'm not there to record it, my reaction are going to be very sad. And you might be sad as well. It'd be like, you missed out on a vital... A vital part of my Animal Crossing New Horizons diary. But anyway, let's round this episode off here, why don't we, with Flick. If you have been watching, thank you very much. This has been Animal Crossing New Horizons, and I've been Dear Darling. Any likes, comments, and subscriptions are greatly appreciated. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> and I hope we can see each other again, but for now it's our farewell. So until next time, bye-bye for now. <laughs>